Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I've had an opportunity to have a quick play with the uh, microphone amplifier, which we'll talk about in a sec. Uh, it's a uh, it's an amplifier which I've used before, so just took the opportunity this time just to sort of go back over the circuit, uh, run it through LT Spice just to um, just to make sure it was performing uh, how I wanted. So, in no particular order, let me just run through the circuit briefly for a start. Have a quick look at um, what it looks like on the on the scope, uh, and then I'll put it into the actual radio itself, uh, and bring up a waterfall and start to have a bit of a look at um, how that um, that IF side of the house is going. So um, the amplifier itself is built around again a, a common emitter um, amplifier using the uh, the two N three nine zero four. I actually haven't written it here. Um, Again, what I've elected to do, uh, per the spec sheet, is have it set up for maximum uh, gain through that. Uh, so I've set up for a, a quiescent collector current of 10 milliamps. Uh, based on that, off the spec sheet, we get our, um, which we've seen before, our geometric mean for the beta DC of 173. So square root, uh, the, the, uh, the range in the spec sheet multiplied. What I've elected to do again is just set the elector voltage to be a tenth of VCC, 13.8 uh, volts. I'm going to ignore the uh, the voltage drop across that 10 ohm uh, resistor there. Uh, comes out at 1.38. Um, the other assumption is that our emitter current is essentially the same as our uh, collector current. Uh, the only difference would be uh, that the emitter current has an additional component of, of IB, but you know, down in the microamps it's uh, pretty well effectively the same. So for, the, for intents and purposes we'll just uh, make our elect, uh, emitter current also equal 10 milliamps uh, from a calculations point of view. Uh, that comes out at 138 ohms uh, using a, a close to standard value of 150 ohms. Um, I won't go through the rest because I've done this a few times um, and just for the sake of, of brevity uh, I'll skip over that. Uh, so next, calculating the values of R1 and R2, um, as we've seen before, uh, in order to get a nice stiff um, um, voltage divider biasing up here, 10 times the base current going through that. If you run through the calculations as we've seen before, uh, we come out at 3.6k for R2 and 18k uh, in terms of standard values, that is, uh, for R1. Now the collector current being an audio amplifier, right or wrong, the approach that I've taken is to set the collector voltage to be approximately halfway between our VCC rail, again ignoring the voltage drop across that, and our emitter voltage. Um, uh, so that's, that's, I'm assuming that's going to be my, um, my voltage swing there, uh, to keep us in the linear range and not going into cutoff. So if that's the case then, um, from an expression point of view, my voltage at the collector is going to be half of 13.8 volts minus 1.38. Uh, 1.38, of course, is, is what um, we made the, the the emitter voltage just here. Comes out at 6.21. Divide that by the 10 milliamps, comes out at 621, or um, I've got some 620 ohm resistors, which we'll use for the value of RC. Right, so that uh, brings us on to a couple of the capacitors. Um, I won't keep swapping backwards and forwards. Um, so in terms of our coupling capacitors, which I've just notionally called CC, and our emitter decoupling, or emitter bypass capacitor, I should say, here on the emitter uh, CE. Um, in the past, uh, for a starting point, I've set the, um, the emitter... Uh, the, the, the capacitive reactance of the emitter bypass resistor to be a tenth of RE uh, at 300 Hertz. Um, we know that XC equals 1 over 2 pi FC, so we can rearrange that formula to make our capacitance the unknown, because we do know uh, XC, um, which becomes this new expression here. 150 ohms divided by a tenth is this, this part here. Comes out to be 35 microfarads. I'm going to up that up to 47 microfarads, uh, which makes this um, expression even more true, so to speak. Um, and over here on the LT SPI side, um, I'll, I'll come back to that and, um, and I'll talk about what I, what I did there. For the two coupling capacitors, uh, again as a starting point and, and rules of thumbs that I've seen before, uh, to have the capacitive reactance of those two coupling capacitors to be less than 100 ohms at our lowest frequency of operation. Um, 
throwing that into the uh, the equation there, or rearranging again our our um, capacitive reactance formula to come up or to make the capacitor the subject. We come out at 5.3. I'm going to up that to uh, 10 microfarads. The last uh, resistor to be calculated for this particular configuration here, uh, I'm going to use an electric microphone. Um, these little microphones um, from the spec sheet are typically roughly the same, requiring a certain voltage here to a certain current through it. Uh, in this particular case, I'm going to run with uh, a current of half a milliamp at 2 volts. So it's going to be a simple game of doing Ohm's law again. Uh, if I've got 2 volts here and 13.8 volts here, again ignoring this, with half a milliamp through it, and it should be pretty forward, pretty straightforward to work out then from Ohm's law what our resistor needs to be. So 13.8 minus 2 divided by half a milliamp equals 23600 ohms. Um, and I'm going to um, just subtly uh, go on the higher side on that and I'm going to use a 27k ohm resistor. So coming back to LT Spice, uh, what I elected to do just to um, have a bit of a play around is, and hopefully that's reasonably visible, uh, is I've got the circuit configured up here. We can see that the emitter resistors bypass capacitor, I've got here little curly bracket C close curly brackets, uh, and I'm using the, the simulation command to step that parameter C through three values. 47 microfarads, which is our starting value straight off um, the calculations, uh, a second value of 100 microfarads, and then just doubling that up to 220 microfarads. And these are the three plots we see here. The green plot, as we can see, is 47 microfarads. The blue plot is a bit hard to see blue, but never mind, it's uh, the 100 microfarads. And our red plot is 220 microfarads. And as we can see there that... Um, our 300 hertz starts here, so we can see that the 220 microfarad capacitor certainly provides better low frequency performance than say the 47 microfarad capacitor as a starting point. So um, that's the value I'm going to use in the circuit. I'm going to use 220 microfarads and uh, we'll see how the actual circuit works out compared with the simulation. So let me just uh, reconfigure the camera here and try not to make anybody uh, sick. So I've got on the right hand side there the SIGGEN. The SIGGEN is feeding in. It will be a range of frequencies uh, from, sorry for the ticking there, from 300 Hz up to 3 kHz. Uh, the scope here will be looking at the, the output which is in yellow and the purple will be the input. Um, at the moment, uh, right. Something I actually didn't mention, and I'll just double back on that actually. Uh, on the output of the amplifier, I've got a little trim pot here. Um, in the past, it has not taken anywhere near all of the gain that this amplifier will provide from the electret in terms of the output to drive the, the mixer. So I'm going to have a little trim pot here, so it just allows me to, uh, to vary that, that level that's going to go into the balanced modulator. Um, but what I'm going to try and do this time for something different, and I have not gone to any lengths to try and make this as accurate as possible, but I'm going to sort of try and present to that uh, balanced modulator um, something looking like a little bit like uh, 50 odd ohms. Um, please don't leave any of uh, the comments. It's, it's, it's not hard and fast, but that's what I'm sort of playing around with. So what I've elected to run with, I've elected to run with a 500 ohm trim pot here. Uh, my assumption being that, uh, based on past experience, um, I won't actually need to have this trim pot terribly high up that range from, if we go from DC here or ground, it's in, yeah, it doesn't view, uh, from 0 ohms through to 500. I'm going to be sitting in the lower portion there, so I'm not going to be far off having um, 50 odd ohms in parallel with this other component here. Now, at this point here, looking back in, ignoring our capacitive reactance from a purely resistive point of view, we have RC, which is our 620 ohms. Um, this, this rail here is bent down to ground because of all the uh, decoupling, uh, effectively in parallel with a high impedance from the transistor. So, roughly looking in there, we'll be seeing 620 ohms. So, at this point here then, looking back in, I'm going to have 50 ohms in parallel with 620 plus 
uh, whatever portion is left over here. So in the region of say 450 odd ohms, um, that's that's my assumption. So that's what I've been playing around with this little trim pot down here. So it's a 500 ohm trim pot, uh, which allows you, we can see, just to uh, tweak that output um, in relation to uh, the input. Uh, in terms of, of max gain in this particular configuration, uh, I've got a, a 50 ohm uh, resistor there, which is acting as the the um, load, uh, which will be in this particular case the balanced modulator. Um, in this particular configuration, using 20 log voltage gain, uh, it's roughly uh, 20 odd dB. Um, and like I say, I won't be needing to be near that, I'll be um, somewhere down uh, in this region down here I fully expect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, crank this up uh, another division and just set this arbitrarily to uh, full scale deflection, roughly. I'll turn off our, um, our input signal. So now we're just looking at the output there and our input frequency, you can see that, uh, is sitting at 1 kilohertz. If I start to wind that frequency up now, so we go up to uh, 2 kilohertz, 2.5, uh, 3 kilohertz, we can see there that um, in line with the simulation that the, the output um, has not grown or decreased to any great extent, uh, which is in line with the simulation. Dropping that frequency back down again, so back down through 1.5k, back down to, in this particular case, uh, right now, uh, 1 kilohertz, roughly that sort of, um, sort of full-scale deflection. And as we start to decrease now back through uh, 900 hertz, 800 hertz, 7, 6, 5, we just start to see that uh, output slowly drop off uh, in line with the simulation. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to live with that. Um, I'm quite happy that those sort of lower, lower frequencies of uh, 3 through 6, um, there's a, yes, there's a, a slight reduction there, not a huge amount um, in output, but I think that'll be fine in terms of uh, in intelligibility of the, uh, the received or the transmitted signal in both cases. So I'm going to leave it like that and um, what I'll do now, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, I'm going to transfer this back through onto the main radio, uh, connect up the electret and have a bit of a play around with that. So back soon. Okay, so got the audio uh, microphone amplifier that is in the circuit connected up to our uh, front panel microphone socket so that's providing both the DC bias and the audio coming back. Um, that's being amplified, it's uh, receiving 12 volts uh, transmit and it's going into this relay here. So if you recall these, these two relays here um, as well as uh, toggling our clock 0 and clock 2 which is our VFO and our BFO gets toggled on transmit allows the RF to pass through the IF strip in the same direction for both transmit and receive. So in this particular case uh, we're on transmit so we have keyed, this relay has toggled over, um, our VFO and BFO frequencies have toggled across which means that this mixer here uh, which is receiving our audio coming in and our BFO has essentially become our balanced modulator the output of which is our intermediate frequency which passes through the second lot of contacts back through the first IF amp through our crystal filter unwatered sideband stripped off um, through the second IF amp uh, through the second relay here into our second mixer that's been mixed with what was the VFO frequency which is now stepping that up to our desired transmit frequency out the, out the, uh, the second lot of contacts here uh, what eventually will go on to here will be the uh, transmitter uh, eventually if I if I get to it um, otherwise at the moment it's just a, a 50 ohm resistor with a loosely coupled wire here connecting it to our receiver um, I think that's all I need to cover there so at the moment I've got the microphone uh, sitting under a towel next to a uh, just a small mp3 player it's not a very good setup but uh, close enough for this and I'm just uh, transmitting um, a, uh, a podcast, so, oops, Daisy, let me just zoom up onto the radio there. So just got the, uh, the HF radio uh, hooked up on 3690. Uh, we can see our lower sideband being transmitted, um, coming through. I can then, on the front panel of the radio, flick the switch to upper sideband, 
Um, should there be a desire, uh, you know, ordinarily um, a lower sideband would only ever be used for this particular band. Right. Upper sideband, we're now detecting that. I've got the volume a bit high, there's a little bit of feedback coming back through the microphone. Back down to lower sideband. Oh, wrong way, lower sideband. So that's good, so um, I'm, I'm happy with, with how, that's, how that's working. So let me just turn that down, let me just zoom up and come back down here again. So in terms of where to next, like I say, I've got a few things on at the moment where, which may preclude my ability to work on this in the near term, but at the moment uh, the receiver's all up and running obviously. Uh, as you've just seen there, our low level uh, transmit RF is being produced, and now it's just a matter of uh, amplifying that up to a usable level uh, for transmit. And that is that. Um, I don't think there's anything else I wanted to cover. Um, there was a question about the need to have a, a manual switch. Uh, I've noticed that there's been a couple of occasions where on some bands people elect to use the other um, sideband. Um, so I've just, in this particular case, had the ability to have that manual um, here or there. Okay, I think that's about all I want to touch on today. Um, we talked about the uh, transmit being sensed by the Arduino, the transmit uh, 12 volts, which is switching our two relays, and the microphone amplifier. That's it. So I'm going to start to ramble now, so that's a good time for me to say 73, and we'll catch you uh, sometime in the future. Cheers all.